Hello everyone, welcome back to Eat Sleep Reap. Today we're going to be covering something I think a lot of us are going to find useful in this hobby. Uh, pretty much anyone that does reefing um, at really any level, I think you're going to hopefully gain some knowledge here. Um, obviously this is stuff I've uh, I've picked up you know, over the, the very few years I've been doing this. Um, also a lot of it from trial and error, uh, personally being able to see the differences. So what we're going to be talking today guys about is going to be lighting. So lighting in your reef tank as you guys may know is one of the very important parts of the reef tank. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most important one. Uh, I think before lighting uh, you have certain things uh, such as stability. Uh, so that really falls down to maintaining water and you know then probably second or third in line uh, is kind of where lighting falls in which is probably surprising to to some of you listening to this I, I think a lot of people put a little bit too much emphasis on, uh, emphasis on the lighting and really don't realize that you kind of have to first achieve stability um, because you know until you have that stability uh, you're really not not going to have that success you're looking for. So with that being said, I kind of want to jump right into this video, guys. Um, really just take a, a nose dive into it uh, to cover some, th some things that I have learned uh, throughout my time here in the hobby. So one of the very first things I do want to talk about because I get asked quite a bit is number one, what lights do you run? So first of all, guys, I am running, as you guys can see here, two XR15 uh, Generation 4 lights. Uh, for you guys that have followed me for any length of time, you've probably seen that I used to have an XR30, and you're probably saying, so why the heck did you get rid of the XR30 and go with two 15s? Oh, but there's kind of a few reasons. Uh, my tank specifically is almost 30 inches wide. Um, so when I had the 30 on there, it was pretty good spread, but I noticed uh, with the 215s, I was able to control the spread a lot better. Uh, you're probably saying, well, how do you do that? All you do is you really just open up the spacing a little bit and it just gives you more control. More importantly, I'm obviously not going to keep this tank forever. I am going to go bigger. Uh, so that quickly opened up the gates to allow me to use uh, both lights on a bigger tank without having to purchase any more lights. You know, if it was an XR30, there's really no way you can, you know, spread them apart unless you cut the thing open and do a crazy DIY, which I would not be doing on a $800 light. Um, but yeah, for upgradability. So that's also one of the main reasons I did the, X, the dual XR15s is one, to have better spread um, and also for the, uh, the upgradability, you know, if I do go with a bigger tank. Worst case scenario, I may have to buy one more. Uh, at you know 400 bucks instead of 800 bucks so that's kind of my my take on that I know a lot of people are always asking me why why did you do 215s well that's that's really the reason um, as far as the power is concerned um, an XR15 is exactly half the power in, of an XR30 um, it has the same LEDs on it the, the same everything so they're they're essentially the same exact light just only one puck versus two puck is really the only difference so Another thing I get asked a lot is of my light schedule. So I get asked quite a bit as far as my lighting schedule. So here you guys can see it. Um, I'm running the lights at an overall intensity of 75%. Uh, so just keep in mind this is 75% assuming you put all the individual channels at 100%. It's the maximum uh, kind of they'll ever uh, really go. So. I am doing an 11 hour photo period, kind of starts at 11 in the morning from 10 uh, at night. Uh, typically I do this, I push it farther along the day because towards the mornings I'm not really at home. Uh, it just allows me to view the tank, you know, later on in the day, feed them, record them, you know, what have you. So the, the program, to tell you guys a little bit more about it, <clears throat> it's the same program Worldwide Corals uses. Uh, pretty much it's a, a, a five hour uh, white period and then five hour uh, mainly blue period given when I say white I don't mean 100% white here you can see the individual uh, channels so this is the first half of what I call the white period uh, with cool white at 40 warm white at 0 green at 40 and uh, red at 10 
and that goes on till 5. Uh, again, it's the same same schedule. Kind of at 520, we ramp down to what I call the full blue, just with the hair of, of uh, cool white. And this goes all the way on to 945 uh, with the transition to full blues here and violets. And then a 15 minute kind of just shut off uh, from here. So now that we did get this, the my lighting schedule out of the way, hopefully answered a few questions there, I want to go a little bit more in depth on lighting. So this is going to be a little bit more geared towards intermediate or intermediate and new reefers, and just uh, really want to dive in a little bit more as far as lighting. So I think people tend to point way too quickly, quickly the finger at lighting anytime there's an issue uh, with a coral or corals. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how many DMs I get. Uh, you know, someone will send me something like, hey, my Euphili isn't opening. Should I add more blue? Should I add more white? What should I do? And really, guys, almost 90% of the time, lighting isn't to blame. Um, it's a fluctuation in a parameter where I'm going with that stability. I think the first thing, anytime you see issues with the coral, you have to point the finger at some element, some trace element, something in the water, either fluctuating, changing, and not staying consistent, thus stressing out the coral. I mean, there is cases when lighting can be an issue, but generally speaking, corals aren't that picky on how much blue, how much white you're running. I mean, given within reason, um, you know, they'll, they'll take it pretty well. I see way too many people always logging on forums, changing their template, you know adding more blue adding more white and they do this on a regular basis the thing you got to realize anytime you make a change to lighting it's gonna in essence shock the coral and it's gonna take anywhere from one to two months for it to really get back on track and start growing start being really happy again so just keep that in mind that if you are going to do changes it's gonna take a while for the coral to come back you know for you guys watching maybe you got your first set of lights and you're saying so what color should i run Generally speaking, the numbers I'm going to give you here are pretty good all across the board. Uh, it doesn't really matter the brand of lighting. So a good schedule, a good template to start off with. Your violets and blues, put those at about 100% for your white channels. Uh, try to run those anywhere from 5 to 30% depending on the look you're going for. As far as the green and red channels, try and keep those under 20 um, and you should be good to go. Again, that's a good starting point. And don't be that person that's always trying to change the schedule because John told you, because Bob told you. Um, you know, the main thing and the main reason why reef tanks do well and corals thrive is because is because stability. You know, yes, it's a little bit to do with the lighting, um, but more, you know, in more cases than not, it's the stability in the water. Um, so, you know, from this point forward, I guess if you have an issue. Have lighting be one of the last things you look at and one of the last things you adjust because uh, you can't imagine how many people send me messages, uh, you know, a coral will be acting up and they'll change the lighting and they'll do it on and on and on. So that's also kind of the reason why T5 is such a great uh, light. It's, it's really non-adjustable. It's either on or off and it's pretty much done. There's no way you can adjust it. Uh, that's one of the reasons why so many people have had success uh, with T5. Now with LED lighting, I mean, it's good. They're so customizable, but at the same time, that's kind of one of the downfalls, not of the light, more of the user, uh, because we're just always trying to tinker. I mean, I probably haven't adjusted my lights in months, 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 and mainly when I do make adjustments, it's more on the intensity now. Um, and I do it over typically about six week acclimation. Um, anytime I'm increasing the intensity. So hopefully I was able to shed some light, guys. Um, I think people try to focus too much on lighting and just wanted to let you know it's not, yes, it is important. I'm not trying to say it's not important, but it's not as important as you think um, to hit that, that specific uh, spectrum. Uh, you know, corals will, will accept a, quite a big broad of spectrum. So anytime, you know, you do run into an issue from this point forward, you know, have lighting be one of the last things you check or last things you adjust. It's probably something else in your water column uh, that's getting them pissed off. So 
We're going to leave this video here, guys. I'd love to hear your experiences. What do you think about my thoughts on lighting? Do you feel as well that there's too many people trying to adjust them? I'd love to hear what you got to say down in the comment box below. So we're going to leave this video here, guys. I want to thank each and every one of you for uh, helping me to subscribe. We just surpassed 7,000 subscribers here on YouTube as well on Instagram. We're about to hit 20 thousand followers guys i'm beyond blown away so i want to thank each and every one of you if you're watching and you're not subscribed here to my channel maybe i earned your subscription today hit that subscribe button as well don't forget to hit the notification bell uh, so you get notified of new videos coming out so we're gonna leave it here guys as always thanks for watching happy reefing